This is Bridie Murphy, an interview for Fight Live TV. So Bridie, just want to tell me how this whole thing started. Um, who was your first trainer? My first trainer was Paul Mark, and we were part of the Red Lions Kickboxing Club from Waterfondern. Great thing about Mark, though, I joined a self-defence class and I went on the wrong night with kickboxing. Anyway, I had to go. Next day, I tell my family, I tell my close friends, and before we know it, at least 10 of us joined within three weeks. Uh, and is it true that even your mum got involved? She did. My mum actually uh, videoed her, every move we made, every kick we threw, every punch we threw. She even uh, made us outfits that we used to uh, compete in. And then you started a long journey of different trainers from which of each one you took different things. Uh, so can you tell me about Joan Crummock? Uh, Joan, she trained with Taekwondo. This was after I'd done um, a year or two in kickboxing. Um, so I were in our tasks for Joan. Um, I'd already got set in my ways. I'd been trained as a southpaw by Mark and I actually wasn't a southpaw. But um, it were a little bit hard for Joan, but she stuck with me. She persevered and uh, she graded me to a purple belt Taekwondo. Right, and then there's also, you mentioned hand speed. Who taught you that? Right, that would be Brian Beck from Sheffield. Um, after we'd finished with Mark, um, the club uh, folded. Um, we all went our separate ways. Um, we joined Brian Beck, and um, what Brian Beck taught us was hand speed and combination. Uh, we'd already got some technical skill from Mark when we went to Brian, so what Brian did was sharpen up what we'd already got. I can see it took a lot of people uh, and a lot of combinations in this, uh, to which you then acquired what you call street credit and a smile. Where did that come from? Well, that came from the great Arthur O'Loughlin. After we trained at Brian Beck's for a while, me and John, we wanted uh, to do something different. So we tried full contact karate and the only man would be Arthur O'Loughlin. So me and John, we joined. Uh, it was great. We got to know members there. Um, we were point fighters, me and John, so we've been trained semi-contact. This was our chance to do full contact fighting. Um, our hard work, again, uh, I were a girl, I was skinny, I didn't have much power. Um, again, stuck in my ways, but this is where Sean Cassidy came in. Uh, he, 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 he trained me and John, and he, he was fantastic. Great thing about Sean's training, the basic, let's stick to basic. Basic is what it needed for me to learn. And then from there, I went on from having a ridge hand, to a left hook. Um, what happened in Arthur's, um, I was sparring one of the guys and I accidentally broke his nose. I looked in Arthur in, uh, at Arthur in fear, thinking I was going to be in trouble. And he didn't, he just smiled at me and he turned away and I knew, I knew it were okay to do it again and again and again. And I went on to develop some some good punches and I, I, I did good. Arthur, Arthur did me good, he, uh, he trained me full contact. So Sean Cassidy got you the, through the uh, strong basic techniques that you mentioned? He did, yeah. Sean's, Sean's were a fighter himself, uh, he were a champion. And he knew that basic skill paid off. Um, things needed to be basic for me to learn, so training with Sean was fantastic. Also when we were talking, you mentioned pride in your brother and a guy called Pat Revellino. Yeah, that's right. I uh, first came across and met Pat at uh, one of the competitions. <laughs> We're all again disqualified, which after not, it, it, it happened a lot. Um, I was never clear on all the rules and I like to take part in all the rules, so I used to get a little bit confused. And this one particular time, I was fighting and uh, I believed I won, but the, the judge says not. But there was one guy that stood up for me, Pat Revellino, and he said, you know what, I'm going to write a letter on your behalf. And he did. And he said, you should come to my gym. You should come and train with me. So I did. But also my brother came along with me and Pat, Spotted um, potentially my brother, um, you know, he, he, he saw a, a strong young man. And Pat turned to my brother um, and trained my brother, and that's where my brother did his first full contact fight. It were an hard fight, it were against a champion, it were an hard fight, but my brother, I was so proud, so proud. In fact, I've never been as proud as I was that day, you know, he did a great fight, and he only had six weeks to train for it. So you said blood, sweat, and tears was a uh what you connect and uh, Mr. John Green being your brother. Yeah, me and John, we trained together. We self-taught. Um, he's got his ways, I've got mine. He took from his trainers what he did. I took from my trainers what I did. But still we trained together. Uh, I, I never wanted to do this without my family. It started as family and that's what made it great. That's why I carried on. 
Uh, not just the self-defence, but everything that came with it. it, it kickboxing in itself were, were a family. Uh, and there were like 30, between 30 and 50 people that I saw regular, you know, in a week's time. So training with, with all these people has, has been great. We, me and John, we'd train together, we'd have a laugh, we'd end up arguing. Uh, John would tell me to do a combination and roll. I'd do a combination and roll, but he'd, he'd hit me on top of the head. <laughs> he'd laugh, I'd get angry. But nevertheless, I'd go to the opposite side of the gym and everything was good. So it was a long journey that you t went on with your brother and possibly something that movies or books could be made of one day. Definitely movies and definitely books, most definitely. Books have been done and movies have been done, but you know, I've had a long, long journey, a long journey in this game. And I know there's more to tell than what's been told already. Um, and especially how it's helped me in my personal life, uh, mostly how it's helped me in my personal life. You know, I went to learn self-defence and I, I, I learned to become a champion. Uh, what I got from it along the way was just so much more I could ever, ever imagine. And uh, so you've met some solid friendships along the way. Does one of them, any of them stand out for you? Mike Lambert, um, amazing guy. Mike Lambert, stunts.com. Mike's a local guy from Swinton. Um, we trained at my brother's gym and it was amazing. What made it amazing was Mike um, were a stuntman in movies, so he'd, we'd get to work on his combinations. And then I were a fighter as well at the time, so we'd get to work on my combinations. So we'd all the pads for one another and we'd say, right, this round is for the movies. And we'd have a right laugh, spinning oh. up cakes. Does any movie stand out for you? Um, there is. Um, it's called The One. Uh, and it's a movie with Jet Li and Mike Lambert actually does the six minute fight scene right at the end. Now I remember Mike Lambert training on, on, on that and it was fantastic to be, even be a part of it. So along with the people in the, uh, in the world of films and movies, you also met people from other areas. Uh, Mick Pacey Boxing. Absolutely fantastic guy, Mick Pacey. Um, again, I've never been easy to work with, never. Mick Pacey did the absolute impossible. I was a southpaw kickboxer who needed to box. Um, I joined Mick Pacey's gym. Um, he didn't really like teaching women to fight, uh, to box, but I think I might have earned Mick's respect because I was already a fighter. Anyway, Mick decided to help me, but he was adamant that I wasn't a real southpaw. So what Mick wanted to do was turn me orthodox and teach me to fight from scratch as an orthodox fighter, which any southpaw will know out there, that's taken everything I've learnt away from me. All my basics have gone, everything, we had to start again from the beginning. And I fought with Mick against it, I didn't want to, but he were adamant, you're going to be an orthodox. So anyway, we worked together and fantastic, fantastic results came from Mick. I developed an amazing left jab. I went on to do a five round uh, boxing fight with, with that left jab. What Mick taught me was a good left jab, tying up tactics, that's all you need in boxing. And, and, and that, that's true, that's true. Jab and move, all the way, jab and move. So along your journey, um, the strength and power, where would you say your strength and power came from? Although I was still kickboxing as well as all boxing, because the idea were, from boxing was to strengthen my hands for kickboxing, I came across Fred Gunnersall from a gym called Hard and Fast, and that's exactly what that gym was, hard and fast. What they were able to do was transfer my power from the kickboxing into boxing. Um, he, he managed to do this in one training session, which amazed me, being as I usually find everything I had to do. But Fred, he, um, he's got some good boxing skills and he, he did it in a day. I went on to visit Fred in his uh, boxing shop. Um, my mum even made shorts and we, you know, we, we give them to Fred, he put him in his shop. It, it was fantastic. So boxers were now wearing designer fight wear that were made by my mum. So it wasn't just kickboxers, it went into boxing. So a family thing all the way through. Um, when it comes to different kind of combinations, where would you say your body shots came from? Uh, from The Rock, Kev Burton. Now, I was already a fighter when I met Kev, and I met him through Mick Pacey. Again, I was always meeting fantastic people through all these trainers. Kev Burton was one of them. Um, and Kevy came to me, my brother's gym, and uh, he said, let, let, me do some, let me do a bit of training with you. Anyway, I agreed, and his first training session, he went, I want to teach you body shots. And my reaction was, actually, I don't really want to do body shots, because I, I don't think they work. 
And he just looked at me and then he just tapped on his front body and I fell to my knees. And I knew, when I looked up, I saw the look on his face and he didn't want to do that. But he needed me to know that body shots are everything. From that moment, body shots became everything. From then, I developed my skills in body shots, but I took it further. Um, it's all about the body shots, guys, as well. It's not just the left jab, it's about the body shots. So you've got your shots in the order now, you're working on your power. Um, what would you say you took from Mr Mick Armstrong? I met Mick again through Mick Pacey, fantastic guy. Got to do some training with, uh, with Mike, um, amazing. What he taught me was to manoeuvre around the boxing ring, to almost go in on my shots and come back out. A moving target is an hard target to it. So what, what Mick Armstrong taught me was to manoeuvre and use me all, for, all my four corners with a boxing ring. Um, and that's priceless. Again, that fell under the jab and move from Mick Pacey. So all my training were coming together. I was getting stronger and stronger and stronger as a fighter in many styles. And ring craft. So you talk about perimeter and then ring craft. Yes, ring craft's very different. A ring craft's about cutting down your opponent. Once you've cut your opponent down, you've then got to deal with him. You know, it's okay jabbing and moving, keeping safe. But the minute you cut a fighter down, you've got to deal with it. So ring craft. That's where, again, working all your four corners, working on your foot handles. This came from a, a guy called Dave, a really, really patient man. Um, in fact, probably the most soft-hearted man I've ever trained with, which, because I knew this, I knew that I couldn't argue with Dave, and, and I, you know, I respected him, he was a calm, gentle guy, and um, I think we worked well together because of that. Um, again, um, he taught me fantastic things that already could build to what I'd already got. I understand boxing is probably taking you all over Europe uh, and you've done 14 some countries um, around Europe, but also you took it, you went into um, Turkey. I did. Um, well, it was, what happened is me and my mum went on holiday and um, I never liked to go anywhere unless I could find a, a gym because it, you know, it was part of my life and it is what I did. Um, if me and mum were to go away for seven days, I wanted to train for three of them seven days. So my mum always found me a boxing gym or some kind of gym. Anyway, we went to Turkey for two weeks and my mum found me a gym to train. And in that gym, I met some fantastic guys, absolutely fantastic. This time, it was Muay Thai. Again, never done Muay Thai, but I had skills. I had boxing skills, I had kickboxing skills, I had taekwondo kicks. I had enough skill to impress Turkim, um, who then wanted to help me and uh, teach me uh, Muay Thai. And also, when I came back from Turkey, I carried on uh, Muay Thai. Um, in Sheffield with a girl called Ellen Garnett, who were again fantastic. I train with Ellen every week. She showed me so much, so much. In fact, I'm going to say, learning Muay Thai was the last skill I learned and it actually put the cherry on the cake because it made all styles more understandable to me. And Glyn Rhodes, the, uh, maybe gave you style, did it? Yes, Glyn Rhodes. Our, Again, really lucky it was when I was focusing on my boxing at the time. I trained with a guy called Ryan Rowlandson who had turned pro through uh, Glyn Rhodes and he asked me, I'd already been training with him at, at McPaces and he asked me would I like to come and join him, so I did. Um, I was used to training two minute rounds but up at Glyn Rhodes it was three minute rounds. So again, I had got some skills already from boxing but this training was to be different and I trained three minute rounds and he put me on a bag at the side of one of his champions and I just thought you know what whatever that guy does I'm going to do because he's already great. <laughs> the training up there again was fantastic. I learned real true boxing style from this guy. Um, I'd got my boxing from Mick Pacey, from Mick Armstrong but from Glen Rhodes I, I learned pure boxing style. And I know you use your training um, to help you in your mental health but one of the last people you mentioned to me was uh, Dave Marshall or maybe gave you peace. Yeah, training with Dave Marshall. So I had a year out from fighting and I wanted to do some different kind of training. And I wanted to do some kind of strength training which involved uh, bikes, rowing machines, cross trainers. And the guy at the time, at Fitness First, I was attending the gym with my brother and my sister Kerry. Um, I came across Dave Marshall and um, he was impressed with the fact that I was a kickboxer and I'd done martial arts. And he, um, he, he noticed I was underweight really for the sport I was doing. And Dave noticed I were fighting bigger girls and he offered me um, some help for strength training. Anyway, so we did. 
took her out fighting and again amazing absolutely amazing i've got to say that was one of the most hardest training i have ever done the Roy machine amazing absolutely amazing i've got one here at the back of me because i know i'm going to retire <laughs> on a rowing machine full body workout perfect the training with dave marshall it was that hard it, it took every every bit of energy and will that i had but from it came peace of mind i remember my friend saying to me one day what's wrong brad you quiet what's in your mind and i'm saying there's nothing in my mind and they had a worried look on my face and i said don't worry because first time in my life i've got peace in my mind so that's what i get from you dave marshall which i, I thank you gratefully i don't get that often in my mind but what I do now is, when I'm struggling, I get on my rowing machine and I do a 20 minute row. And by the time I get off it, I'm feeling strong, physically and mentally. So I thank you greatly for that. So all these people you've mentioned have given you certain uh, highs in your career and your training, uh, but you've also had personal battles with your uh, mental side, which is very high on the agenda these days of, well, because of what's going off. Um, and bipolar disorder, is uh, one of them. Can you tell me how it helps you and your training combat or uh, help you with bipolar disorder? Bipolar is something I've had all my life. Um, I've struggled with it all my life. Um, how I found training out, especially martial arts, this is where it had to be martial arts for me. I found myself in a situation where people never listened to me, never really understood uh, what I was trying to tell them. I never understood what they were trying to tell me. And finally, we're in a position where, you know what, words didn't matter really so much. It were actions and learning as well, learning new things. That, that helps tame what I call the beast. So I look at bipolar as a beast. You know, sometimes I misunderstand people. Um, I start shouting. I get upset. They start to misunderstand me. And before you know it, the beast is released. Martial arts tamed my beast which I'm, might sound strange when I had so many weapons in the end, but having them weapons and being able to express all that energy in a training session were just amazing. Again, after a training session, peace of mind. After a training session, I cleaned my house. I think all the jobs I got to do that day, I'd do after a training session. If I were to get up in the morning and not train, I never did them jobs I needed to do. I just didn't have the energy. I had to stay at will. So I've got a lot of strong will from training. So I know there's many mental issues and along with bipolar, generally a person doesn't suffer just one. Um, and with body dysmorphia and anorexia, um, I believe you suffer both these. And in your own words, you say anorexia never leave you. You're living with it and fighting with it every day. And it also has triggers. So, and the triggers affect you in many ways. Can you explain them? Body dysmorphia. As many people know in the fitness industry, there's a lot, the lot, there is a lot of athletes and a lot of bodybuilders that have body dysmorphia. This is a way, training is a way of controlling your thoughts and what's going off in your body. Because we're transforming. We're transforming as mind and we're transforming as body. Um, body dysmorphia, the way training helped me, to build a strong body, you have to have nutrients. This helped me get the nutrients I needed, because I had to have them. Without the nutrients, I couldn't have a training session. So what I used to do was liquidise my food, and this 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 was better than no food. Liquidising your food was the way for me. Um, so I always made sure I had one solid meal a day, and the rest were liquidised, but that were enough to get me through what I needed to do. Um, the problem was, because there were not many girls fighting at my weight category, I had to fight bigger girls, and this was worrying to other people. People who loved me, people who cared about me. Um, my brother used to say to me, why, why are you fighting this girl, Bridie? She's bigger than you. And I'd, I'd tell him, don't. <laughs> I'm fighting my demons and this girl's going to help me. You know? So that's where body dysmorphia might have worked against me. You know, I should have... I should have probably not fought girls so big, really. Because sometimes I did get injured. Um, or I was too drained after a fight. But nevertheless... I fought my demon in that fight, that girl helped me, and I came out alive, and I'm proud as well, so I had pride uh, along the way, which, which, which is good. 
I, I needed to have something good to, to hold on to. So do you think uh, you picked these larger fighters because you knew you'd have, you had to train harder and therefore the training harder made you need the more nutrients. So in, in your words, anybody suffering from any eating disorder or mental illness, training can be a big way and a big help to these people. Training's amazing. Along with a trainer comes, with training comes dietitians. So I've learned a lot through the years where we all these trainers that have trained me, different diets, varied diets. And then I went on to study food and what, what part it plays in the human body and its mechanism and, and how the human body deals with martial arts or any kind of athletic kind of training. So along the way I was gaining knowledge, but still I had a problem with preparing food. That, that were a big problem. I didn't want food in the cupboard. I didn't particularly want food around me. And I'm a vegan and I've never used food as a, as a luxury. To me, it's just been a necessity and not always a nice one. Um, again, being a vegan made things harder for me. Um, luckily, I've got a lot of friends, a lot of friends who understand me, who help me. They're always around me. They're always checking on me. Um, I've got two girls, uh, friends who are officers of the law, Lena and Lindsay, amazing, absolutely amazing. Lena prepares my vegan food and without her, I don't know, I, I really don't know because I just couldn't do this myself. No way could I do this myself. Um, so again, back to the people I have around me. Again, Lena, um, I met at my sister's uh, hairdressing salon. Uh, you know, she mentioned she wanted to do some training, some martial arts training. We did a bit of training together. And then I mentioned about me being vegan, not being, not being able to cook. And Lena prepared me some meals and she's been doing so ever since, which I've got to thank her greatly for because without that food, there is no training. Without training, I don't know. I'm still training. So there's an, you would say there's an army or a team and teamwork is always the best. So it's a team of these people that you've trained with over the years and people you continue to meet along your journey who's made you the fighter and the person you are. Definitely. I, I, I'm, I'm sat here today with everything I have because of people around me. Every technique I've learned is from somebody. All the ability I've got is from somebody. All my knowledge were taught to me by somebody. And I do believe that all these people that are in my life are sent through God. I believe they're angels. I believe they've, they've crossed my past. They've made me a stronger, better person. They've, they've enabled me to, to survive in a world that were great. Not, not just in a world of sadness, but in actually a world of greatness as well, which is 50-50 in the scale for me. And that's why I'm here today making this video. And along your journey, there's uh, lots of people you've trained um, and a note you mentioned earlier was, in your eyes, they've trained with God. Yeah, I've always, from being young, been religious. Um, I went to Sunday school as a child, but then as I got older into teenage years, I went off into the world and, and, and did what people do. Um, and then I never really wanted to hurt anybody who I fought. I never did. You know, in that fight for my reasons, uh, the girls I fought were fantastic, amazing, amazing girls. Um, but the people I've trained with have been amazing people and they've helped me all along the way. I never really did want to hurt anybody, but I, you know, I did want to win. I did want to win the fight, but you've got to learn the rules first and you've got to, you've got to be in the fight, you've got to be fully in the fight. At the time, I'd jump in a ring with a girl because I wanted to practice my left hook or my right jab or my left jab. And there weren't many girls who were to spar with, so Jumping in a fight was just like a sparring session to me in one way. Don't get me wrong, I took it serious. I did take it serious. Um, and respect to everybody I fought, you know, it takes two people to have a fight. And uh, I don't look at any one of my fights as a waste of time. Every one of them were brilliant. <laughs> I remember you all. I, I do remember you. I've got pictures of you on my wall and I remember. I look at you and I smile and I think, yeah, you got me with that really good kick. You got me with that good side kick. You got me with that left hook. You know, you got me with that jump spinning back kick, lead attackers. <laughs> and amazing. Amazing what you taught me and, and amazing what I taught you as well. So along your journey and all the, the masses of people you've met, you've helped and you've took things from, you then started to give things back to your charities. And there's quite a few that you uh, are passionate and close to your heart. Would you like to mention them? 
Um, yes, there is. It, I, I've always donated to animals. I'm a, as, as I told you, I'm a vegan. I want to stop all cruelty to animals. If if I could do this single handedly, I'd have done it by now, and I can't. So I need help with that as well. Um, the charities that we're going to be looking towards, uh, and by the way, I'll tell you what we're going to do with that one because everybody who knows me knows I retired as a fighter. Obviously, I passed my skill on to other fighters uh, alongside my brother um, in Dragonfoot uh, Promotions gym. Uh, I'd teach my boxing skill, I'd teach on everything that I'd been taught. Um, this is what makes a fighter great, by the way, is not just one trainer, but skills from many a place. You know, boxing, taekwondo. We've got uh, a taekwondo lad in our gym called Simon Blood. You should see what he can do with his legs. is amazing. But he'll pass that skill onto a Thai boxer. Uh, he'll also pass it onto a kickboxer. He'll pass that skill onto a low kick fighter. So the skill that Simon Blood has uh, and the, the different trainers in our gym, Graham Blackwell, it, it's amazing. We've got different styles, which makes fighters' ability amazing. Um, you can tell me where I've lost myself. Oh, the Salvation Army, the British Red yes. Cross. That's what we're going to do. Me and Danny Zuko, this is what we plan to do when all this is over. We're going to do five rounds of five different styles of fighting for five different charities. Um, the animals, the homeless, look at what we've done for the homeless already. They're off the streets. Why did we not get on the streets a long time ago? Some of them want to stay there, some of them don't want to. You know, we, I'm going to find a way. All them people who don't want to be on the streets, we're going to help them. They're not going back on the streets. You were, the things that we've done already, we, we, we've took people off the streets. It, it's to us. It's down to us now. Let's keep them off. Let's keep them off. Once our streets are safe, let's keep them safe. I know you've mentioned in, in your life you've never, ever voted, uh, but you did vote for our Prime Minister, Mr Boris Johnson. Um, and, and the current situation as it is, is horrendous across the UK. How are you dealing with it? When I first saw Boris, it were a picture of him. And I just thought, we need to comb that man's hair if he's going to lead our country. But as I got to watch Boris on TV, which I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't watch news or, or politics. The only reason why I started doing that was because of this man and his weird hair in paper. And as I got to know him through TV and little bits that I read in paper, I liked him, he made him smile. And I thought, you know, he's, he's a real person, he's real. I can connect with this guy. If I can connect with him, so can many other people. And I knew, I knew that, I knew he was the man to lead our country. And I knew for him to make a difference, it meant we all had to make a difference. We all had to stand up, every one of us. So I did, I did, I did. And I went and voted. And I'm proud I stood behind Boris because I do believe I stood behind the right man. And I, I believe it today more than I did yesterday. He's beat coronavirus. We, we've, we've picked a good one. He's going to be the one that leads us back to being great Britain, back to how we used to be and better. And in your own words, if you've got anything to, to say finally to the people watching this, what may be fighters, may want to be a fighter or may have been fighters, would you tell them to continue fighting and if it's not physically, for something that they believe in? I, I've told you our fighting's helped me. And it has, it's been great. It's been amazing. But not fighting enough alone were enough for me. It, it just won't. Five, six years ago, my mum died and training everything left me i had no will to to come in the gym i had no will to eat i i lost every bit of will i'd ever had in my life and i knew the one place i knew the one place i could go to get all my will back one one place i'd not been for a long time and that was church so one of the guys who i trained with tommy smith um i trained with him for a long time Tommy knows me, he, I know I can talk to the guy, I can just talk to him, just like I'm talking to you. And he come to visit me one day and I told him, you know, Tommy, I don't want you to think I've cracked up <laughs> any more than you think, or you think I have, but I've got to go to church. Tommy, I've got to go to church. And he said, it's okay, that's okay. Um, my sister's got to church. Um, you've got a friend yourself who goes to church. Dave Wake and his family, I've known him all my life. Uh, Dave used to train with us uh, in martial arts as well, um, and his sister back in the day. And he says, you met the phone call. He said, you met the phone call, Bridie. 
and you do what you need to do because that's what you do and I did I made a phone call and I went to church church was my saviour it was my everything I got all the power back I needed to carry on living um, church wasn't easy it won't I battled it all the way I wasn't easy for them I questioned everything and I'm not very good at reading so sometimes I can read things really wrong uh, and I do that and I, I'm a person who will speak up so if I think so much wrong I'm going to speak uh, a lot of the times I really read it wrong and spoke up uh, and then it went down to the Christians to try and answer me and let me know that I'd read it wrong and this is this is what it really means and they said to me, have you read your Bible? Have you been reading your Bible? And I said, I did, and I didn't like what they said, so I slammed it shut. And they said, tell me, tell me where you think it went wrong. And I'd, I'd tell them, and they said, right, you've misread that. This is what it means. So they guided me now for four and a half years, which has been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. I now find my strength. Also, I train. I still train. I'm never going to stop training. And I'm never, never going to stop passing on what these great trainers have learnt me. I'm never going to. This is something I'm gonna do in my 60s if I'm still alive, in my 70s if I'm still alive. But also I've got God in my corner and he's gonna stay in my corner for the rest of my life. And I'm gonna encourage people, if you're ever at a point in life where you think you can't carry on, or there's no light at the end of the tunnel, there is. You pick up your salvation, you pick up your cross, and your cross is your salvation. You pick up your shield and God will protect you as he did me. I'm still struggling this walk in Christianity because it's hard. We have to live this life like Jesus and how can we in a world like this? But look at what we've done. Look at what we did when coronavirus came. Look at as communities came together. Look at what we did. We got the homeless off the street. We're all praying. We're all praying. Lots of us are praying and we're going to get through this. And I believe it's in the power of prayer. I do believe for everybody who's been in a situation like me, you're going to come to times where you think you're not going to get through it. So I'm going to tell you, pick up your cross of salvation and ask somebody who you might know goes to church if they can help you, because I know they can. And if you believe, if someone finds that they can't or don't want to or don't believe in anything in church, the always the way is you, you is the person who can only fix you. Find your inner strength, whatever that may be, and build upon that and become a better you. Or a, just use yourself is what you believe you yeah. at the end of the day the ultimate is you have to help yourself you do all these people i've come across some people were brought to me some people i had to go to we do have to know the truth about the self i've been a tough person i've, I've shown that I, I it's okay for me to say i go to church because i'm a tough girl but i'm also a girl who needs something sometimes you can't even see um, do you think people out there, because this is Fight Life TV, will be surprised to find that a fighter actually goes to church? Do you think they go hand in hand? Uh, yes, actually, because I have met along the way also other Christians um, that fight. I think there's going to be a lot of people shocked um, from what I'm saying because I know there's still uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that don't know I'm a Christian. Uh, it's only the close people around me that, that know I am. Um, so there, there is, there's going to be people, I'm sat here today and even I've thought to myself, what are people going to think? But you know what, I, I can only tell you how I survived and I can only tell, tell you the part that you actually played in it yourselves to help me. Um, but what I am going to say is to people, reach out to people. I've had so much professional counselling along my journey that there's no way I could have survived without it, all these professional people. Um, and also don't be afraid to tell people, if you need help, tell them you need help. You know, the person who don't help you, that's the person who needs to be ashamed, not you. Don't be ashamed to need help. Don't be ashamed to ask for it. Ask for help. You know, people can help you in many ways than what you think, you, you think yourself. Well, Bride, it's been an absolute pleasure. So any final words for Fight Life TV to your fans who may be watching this or anyone out there who's thinking about taking up kickboxing as a career uh, or basically, really, most importantly, as a therapy, you'd suggest it? Definitely. Martial arts is unbelievable. The people you're going to come across uh, is, is just a big family. You are going to have one massive family the day you join. And, and that's that. And they're going, to, they're going to be with you for a long time because you're going to fall in love with martial arts. You definitely are. So, uh, Bridie, thank you very much. And uh, 
I hope to see you soon and we'll see you on Fight Life TV again. Definitely will.